at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia, and um, just starting to work now with Margie Danchen uh, at Murdoch Children's Research Institute as well. Um, the purpose of this conference today uh, was stated as being um, uh, to discuss strategies that are working or could work to build and sustain trust in vaccines. So in my presentation, I'm actually going to take a step back from that and talk a little bit more about how we actually determine or decide whether a strategy works. Um, so I'm going to break down and think through some of the potential impacts of vaccination strategies, particularly for uh, communication for vaccination. Um, and at this point in this field, uh, you know, the most important things are designing and implementing new interventions, but I would say it's also really critical that we get the evaluations right so we can move this field forward. So the focus of my research has been uh, on communication specifically for childhood vaccines. Um, and communication is obviously a critical piece of pretty much every vaccine program. And, you know, we've heard a lot of um, information about different strategies that are potentially promising for uh, addressing things like vaccine hesitancy. Um, but at this point, I think uh, you could agree we're still working on definitively determining which strategies are effective and um, which pieces of those strategies uh, should be translated and used in different contexts. One reason that we don't have a really, really solid evidence base here yet is just because studying the effects of communication uh, can be really challenging. So communication is often uh, combined with a number of different other health interventions or uh, there's a number of different messages and different formats that might all be put together into a multi-component package. Um, and also concepts like vaccine hesitancy in itself is pretty complicated and difficult to unpack and, uh, and to measure. So exploring and um, mapping and then prioritizing some outcomes to measure the effects of vaccination communication strategies was uh, the focus of my um, PhD research, which was just completed. So what we found uh, is that most evaluations, both published research um, uh, study evaluations, but also um, sort of government uh, program evaluations, that kind of thing, perhaps rather obviously focus on um, endpoint outcomes related to vaccination status or behaviors. Um, this is a trend that is, does appear to be sort of changing with more recent studies, and I think that the people in this room are probably at the vanguard of that, so some of this may seem like old news to you, but um, uh, there are definitely many trials out there which only measure, you know, put, it, put a very complicated package of communication into place, but only measure an endpoint outcome like vaccination uptake at the end. And while that's obviously really important, and that's usually what the public health goal of these interventions is ultimately, um, uptake can't really tell us uh, a lot of information about these complicated communication strategies and, and how they work, which parts of them work, or maybe which parts aren't necessary, might be wasting resources. Um, there may be even elements of communication strategies that could be harmful. Um, and so it's really important particularly when you're interested in affecting something like vaccine hesitancy, that you look at more than just uptake, because we know that hesitant parents, um, many hesitant parents do fully vaccinate their children, so they would you know, show up as being fully vaccinated at that, in that endpoint outcome, but they might be much more susceptible to a vaccine safety scare or misinformation, and so we really want to know, I think, at this point, which strategies um, are actually impacting the more nuanced elements of people's thoughts and beliefs. So until we have a sort of a clearer understanding of what's happening between the implementation of these strategies and that endpoint vaccination outcome, uh, we don't really know enough, I think, about how that strategy works. So um, measuring so-called intermediate outcomes, I try not to use intermediate because I think it gives these outcomes less importance or weight, but um, generally speaking, these would not be um, most people's primary endpoint outcomes. So uh, looking at additional outcomes can sort of illuminate what's happening in the middle there. And uh, if we measure the right additional outcomes, we might be able to tell whether a strategy is impacting hesitancy, for instance, in addition to impacting rates or um, without impacting rates. Uh, we might also be able to tell whether a strategy is working in the ways we hypothesize that it would work, but um, maybe actually there's an, a, another barrier we didn't realize was there that's actually stopping people from taking that final step to get vaccinated. So measuring an intermediate outcome might help us identify that. 
Uh, and it can also um, uh, help us tell whether uh, communication is actually being delivered and received in the way that we want it to be. So uh, my thesis work focused on comprehensively identifying um, a really wide range of potential outcomes that might be impacted by different sorts of vaccination communication strategies. So we derived outcomes for this map through uh, a range of different sources. So we started with some outcomes that are uh, known to be potentially associated with hesitancy. We looked at some existing tools like the um, PACV scale and, and the vaccine confidence scale. Uh, and also outcomes that are sort of associated with um, with theory, so the health belief model or um, you know the integrated behavioral model. So things like perceived risks and benefits, perceived risks of disease, um, intention to vaccinate, attitudes and beliefs. These are just some of the outcomes that we identified that that were potentially associated with hesitancy. Uh, and then we also looked uh, outside the vaccination sphere. We looked at different types of health communication literature and the outcomes that are measured. Uh, in those areas that might be relevant. So we looked at um, decision-making literature and decision aids and outcomes that are known uh, to be relevant for those. Um, also, more general consumer-related uh, health communication literature around um, medicines use. And, uh, and then we also looked at community engagement communication because that's an area where we often are interested in engaging communities in vaccination um, and that's sort of a separate field with sort of its own outcomes that we might want to uh, consider in some of our vaccination trials and studies. And then finally, um, there are, uh, it's important that we look at some of these outcomes that are associated with the delivery and the design of communication. These are uh, generally more considered sort of process evaluation outcomes. We've, uh, in, in my work, we've combined them all together and we think that there's um, value in considering them all in one trial rather than necessarily separating them out as a separate process evaluation. Um, I was talking to Nick Sevdalis last night about hybrid trial designs where you um, integrate them together. So I think it's important to consider some of those uh, it outcomes associated with how the communication is delivered, how it's perceived, um, and not just how it's designed. So you don't have to read this in detail, but we compiled all the outcomes into a comprehensive taxonomy, um, which we put together. Uh, and then identifying the potential outcomes was sort of only one step. Um, I think the other important piece here is uh, evaluators actually need to select and measure some of these outcomes because um, if we don't do any evaluation or if we do very, very limited evaluations, uh, you know, it's very difficult for people to learn from each other's work and to build on it. And also, you might may end up wasting resources um, uh, at the end of the day. So while it's not always possible to do a comprehensive evaluation, um, any reported assessments of impact are better than nothing. So um, we used our comprehensive range of outcomes to build a very basic evaluation model just to help think through um, how you might put these into practice. So first step is to identify the target population and the problem. Um, communications are very useful for addressing issues either related to vaccine acceptance or to vaccine awareness. Uh, and you might have purposes like um, informing or educating or reminding or recalling. Um, and then the more specific the features of the problem and the clearer the intended purpose of your uh, intervention, the easier it's going to be to select some appropriate outcomes that might reflect whether those goals are being achieved. Um, you may choose some of these outcomes also related to theory. So you don't have to measure all of these outcomes, but the, choice, the idea being that you select a few intermediate outcomes that reflect some of those purposes of your communication. And then you also integrate one or more of these outcomes associated with the process uh, delivery and design, so you can tell whether the intervention is being, as I said, delivered and perceived and received in the way that you wanted it to be, um, uh, and you might be able to measure something like intervention fidelity. And then finally, you choose, you know, whatever your primary endpoint outcome that's feasible for you to measure or that's relevant for your context. Um, so this model is really straightforward and logical. I mean, it's it's not news to anyone. It's literally a logic model. So it's um, kind of seems simplistic, but I think. Uh, giving people the tools to think through and to think sort of outside the box of what we maybe normally consider relevant and normally measure um, is what's going to actually move this field forward and get to some of the more nuance about which pieces of these packages are the most important, which ones we might be able to um, you know, adapt and use in different contexts. Um, and ultimately, this doesn't tell us everything. We still need to work on developing validated tools for all of these. There are some, but we're working on more. Um, 
but sort of one step at a time, I think. Um, and I guess ultimately, as I said before, any, uh, any evaluation, so a randomized controlled trial or uh, a basic program evaluation, if it's reported and if it's available for us to look at and to learn from, um, that's what's going to help us build better interventions in the future and move this forward. Thank you. Let's just leave it.